That said now scream. Did anybody see that? Let's try it on three. One, two, three. Really quick testimony. I know that you all have been playing, praying diligently for my goddaughter. And she went from not having any brain activity, 100% utilizing life support, to a couple of days ago, I receive a phone call and she is now completely off life support. She is breathing 100% on her own, but she's not out the woods yet, church. So just keep praying, keep praying for her. And as we get ready to go into worship this morning, set your mind to something, a miracle that you want to happen because he is the God of miracles. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you give us testimonies for your glory and her healing is for your glory. Every healing in this room is for your glory. We thank you, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Are y'all ready to worship church? All right. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. 
the Lord loves and have it in the praises of his people, church. And he is here in this place this morning. Come on, church, let's declare and lift it up. Come on. He 
moment in your life where you maybe felt like God wasn't working, like you felt like you've been praying for a long time and your prayers haven't been answered, what you were hoping for hasn't come forward yet, but in those moments, God is still working. God is still up to something, and sometimes we got to trust His timing. His timing is perfect. His timing is not the same of ours, but in those moments, God is a miracle worker. He's a way maker, and I'm thankful for that. Aren't you this morning? Amen. Well, hey, thank you, worship team. Thank you so much for being here. Before you're seated, I want you to find somebody and give them a high five, a couple people there. Find somebody you don't know, introduce yourself before you're seated.
Amen. We want to welcome you today. It is a good full house, and we have something extra special today. Miss Shelby, why don't you tell them what it is? Yeah, for sure. We have our back-to-school family service, so who's excited about it? Yeah, okay, a little more than two people. Pastor Josh, our audience looks a little different this morning. Different. Normally, we were with the kids, and so we're used to seeing some of the kids, but today's audience looks a little bit different. So where are all of the kids at? Let me hear you. Where are the kids? Oh, we've got like four kids. Well, what about where are all of the adults? Yeah, I see a few more adults. We are so excited that whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult, that you're here with us today in our family service to worship together. That's right. I didn't hear some, so there's some in-betweeners, not kids or not quite adults, I guess, in the middle. But anyway, we are glad you're here. And like she said, we do a back-to-school prayer and anointing service every year. But this year, we wanted to do something just a little bit different. We wanted to bring you a little glimpse of what our kids' service looks like every week. And so our kids and us, we're going to kind of show you what our kids' service, just parts of what our kids' service is like every week. And we like to have fun, so is that okay with you this morning if we have a little fun? All right. We like to worship God. We we are not just a nursery, not just a babysitting service back there. We want to connect the kids to Christ. And so we do that in our service, but we also know the kids need to have a little bit of fun while doing that. And so we're going to have a little bit of fun this morning. If this is your first time here, we are so glad you're here. Would you just slip up your hand if you're your first time here? Thank you so much for joining us. Anybody else, uh, we want to welcome you. We love having our guests here today. And uh, on the screen here, if you are new, you can tell, text Welcome FC to 84576. That's our online connect card. There's also connect cards uh, in the back of the seats in front of you. Um, and fill those out. We would love to get to know you. We have a special gift for you at the end of service. If you'll drop by or stop by our, our hospitality area out there, the hub, uh, when you leave, we would love to, to meet you. We also have a couple things coming up. We've got our men's and women's breakfast coming up on August 20th. Uh, it's at 9 a.m. How many of you come to our men's and women's breakfast? All right. If you don't, go ahead and put your hand up that you'll be here this month, right? We want to see you here. Uh, it's free breakfast. Let me say it again, free breakfast. We got breakfast tacos from Oscar Delta, which are amazing. And so we want you to be here, join with us, a uh, good time of fellowship and the word and get to know each other. Sometimes it's hard to get to know each other coming to church and, you know, you don't get to talk to everybody, but at men's and women's breakfast, you can get to know each other. So be here for that. Also, next Sunday is our growth pathway class. And so we've got a few that have signed up, but if you are new to Family Cathedral, maybe you've been here a little while and you haven't gone through a growth pathway class, this Sunday uh, next Sunday, join us. It's at 9 a.m. during the first service. We have a sign-up sheet in the back that you can sign up for Growth Pathway. And so we got a couple other things, Ms. Shelby. And then finally, we just have a couple special things for the service today. If you've noticed that there's some glow sticks, it kind of goes with the theme. If you were not able to get a glow stick and you would like one, um, our ushers have some at the back. They're wearing our kids' church jerseys. We're also doing a special giveaway for some of our educators today. So if you work in a school, you're a school teacher, you're an educator, if you did not happen to get a ticket, if you'll go ahead and raise your hand, Hannah, I'll bring you one. And we'll make sure you're in that drawing. So we've got a couple of teachers around. If you guys can get them some tickets so that we make sure they're in the, the drawing for the Amazon gift card because teachers need supplies. We all know that, right? And we appreciate our educators, right? Yes. All right, thank you. And if you'll get those filled out real quick because we're going to do the drawing in about 10 minutes and just pass those back down. Make sure Hannah uh, or Luke back there, one of our team members in the FC Kids jerseys, gets those. We want to make sure you are in the drawing. Again, I wish we could give all of our teachers a gift card. You guys deserve it for putting up with uh, my kids, at least. I don't know about y'all's kids, but my teacher's kids need it. And so, anyway, we like to set, have fun, like we said. So, Miss Shelby, what time is it right now? It's game time! Man, let's go. Y'all get excited. Who's excited to be in the house of God this morning? Come on now. Woo! How many of you know that serving God is a good thing? You can have a good time and a fun time while serving God. Anybody know that? Yeah. Some of y'all need to know that. Y'all need to get a little more excited this morning. Y'all should have grabbed the donut on the way in. Get your sugar up a little bit. We're about to play a game. So in playing a game, I need some volunteers. I need two young ladies. I need two young men. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Where's those hands raised? I like to call on people that don't want to participate. That usually throws them off a little bit. Let me get Sean, let me get Braden, let me get Juliana, Miss Gracie, come on, come on. 
Y'all give them a round of applause. They're coming. They're excited. <laughs> Woo. All right. Here we go. We're about to play a game called Flapjack. Probably my favorite game because it involves real pancakes, which is awesome. A little hot butter, a little syrup. We're good to go. Anyone like pancakes? Some of y'all, who likes pancakes? All right. Who's a waffle? Anyone like waffles? Okay, well, this game's not for you. This is pancakes. So, Braden, stand on this side for me. Adults on this side, this is what we're going to do. Stand right over here, buddy. Good job. Uh, the object of the game is to take the pancakes one at a time and throw them as hard, I mean, as gently as you can, and try to land them in the pan. So your job is to do one thing. Catch as many pancakes as you can. Can you do that? Are you going to catch a lot of pancakes? Are you sure? Are you going to catch a lot of pancakes? <laughs> well, wow, that's what I'm talking about. He's going to catch one in his mouth. Man after my own heart. You raised him right. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh, even if you lose, catch one in your mouth. We would love to see that. All right, so we're going to give you 60 seconds. Do us a favor not to cross the line. Throw one at a time. And we're going to give you 60 seconds to throw as many as you can and to catch as many as you can. And whoever has the most at the end of 60 seconds wins. Now, the last element of our game involves every one of you. Do I have any ladies in the room today? Okay, okay. That's kind of weak. Do I have any men in the room today? Oh, yeah. Woo, I think the guys might win. I'm just saying. So you, I need your help to cheer them on. So guys, cheer for the guys. Girls, cheer for the girls. And we're going to have a great 60 seconds. So on your mark, tell everybody your name. Juliana. Juliana. She's ready. Juliana. She is ready. She, she's going to beat you. No? Tell everybody your name. Brayden. Brayden is ready. He's going to catch one in his mouth. 60 seconds. Three, two, one, and go. Oh! Woo! Come on, come on! Hey! Oh! Oh! This is awesome! Yeah! Oh! <laughs> yeah! Woo! Y'all cheer him on, cheer him on! Man! Good job, good job! <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> you threw that like a frisbee. Oh, this is looking good. Oh! All right, all right. Count it down with me. Nine, seven, six, five. That's like that amazing half-court shot at the end of the buzzer, and they win the game. We're going to find out. So who thinks the guys win? Oh, some of the guys abandon ship. I can see it. How many think the girls win? Ooh. All right, all right. Count them with me. One, two, three. Just kidding. Only three. That was close. Oh, we might have a tie. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe not. Count them with me. One, two, Whew, that's a lot of pancakes. Three, four, five, six. Oh, man. Woo. Hey, y'all give it up for our volunteers today. Y'all come this way. We got, we got some uh, gifts for you. We want to reward you for your hard work. Give it up for those girls. Hey, as a side note, we're also going to be serving pancakes at the men and women's breakfast now, too. We've got some. That was just a joke. I'm just joking. It's time for us to take up our offering now. And in Kids Church, we usually have some kids who help us out. We don't call them ushers. We call them bucket heads. So I've asked a few bucket heads to come and help me up. So if Davion, if you'll come on up and help me with the girls. And then I have a sibling pair. Luke and Ruby are going to come help me with the boys bucket right over here. All right, and they're going to help us take up the offering, and we're going to take it up just like we normally do in service. So you have four ways to give. They'll put those on the screen. But if you have, look at Luke and Ruby. Everybody say hi, Luke and Ruby. They're going to help us right over here with this bucket right here. They're going to hold it. 
And who could turn away a face like that, right? All right, so if you have offering, we're going to give you a time to be able to, to go ahead and bring that offering up. But first, we're going to open up in prayer. So Keaton, if you'll come up, Keaton's going to pray over the offering for us. Came the easy way up here. All right, so if you'll bow your heads, we're going to go ahead and pray over the offering. Jesus, please bless the offering and the people who gave it. Amen. Amen. All right, if you have offering, go ahead and bring that up in the buckets or use one of the other four ways to give by texting and giving online. Amen. Thank you to our bucket heads. Thank you, guys. You can set those on the stage. Our ushers will come. You can sit on the stage. Thank you there, guys, very much. And again, we teach our kids to give. We want our kids to understand from an early age the importance of giving. Uh, we do a little fun. We have a contest between the boys and girls each week. And uh, But anyway, we want them to learn the importance of giving. And uh, real quick, speaking of giving, where's Miss Hannah at? Do we have the bucket for our giveaways? Did all of our teachers get their names in? You got one back here. One back here. Anybody else? All right. Come on up, Miss Hannah, and we're going to draw. And Miss Hannah, your name is in there this time. No, you didn't put it in there again? All right. Nepotism. Ne nepotism, no. All right, we're going to draw for our first $50 Amazon gift cards. There's a lot of names in here. It is going to Victoria Davis with Smith Elementary. She is a kindergarten teacher right over there. Very good. All right, thank you, Miss Victoria. Good to see you today. And let's see another one here. Let's see who our next one's gonna be. Who wants it? We got any teachers here? We got any teachers? It is Linda Brewer. Yeah. Linda. I won't tell her other teachers, but probably Miss Keaton's, uh, Keaton's favorite teacher right there. Awesome. Probably the best teacher she's had, so awesome. Anyway, she is awesome. I wish we could give all the teachers $50, but we want to uh, honor you guys, and we appreciate our teachers here that give so much, and uh, I know it's tough. But anyway, one of the other things we do each week in Kids Church is we have a scripture that we memorize or teach every week that goes along with our lesson. We call it the power verse. And so if it's okay to, with you guys today, can we teach you the power verse? Yeah. All right. And so we're going to put the power verse up here. Nine. That is not the power verse. Seven. What? Five. I'm not sure what's Three. going on there. Three, Three. two, one. one. What? What's the countdown? Oh what? Is that coming from back here? Commander Houston, is that you? Yeah. What? It is I, Commander Houston. Uh, Commander. There seems to be some kind of mistake. Uh, yeah, I would say there's a mistake. We're kind of in the middle of service here. I was getting ready to teach the kids a power verse. What, what's going on? I thought I was landing in Houston, but the crew must have made some miscalculations. It appears that I'm not even on planet Earth. What do you mean we're not in Earth? This is Texas. Look around. This is Earth. This cannot be Earth. What are you talking about? This is Earth. Well. No sign of intelligent life. Uh, <laughs> Commander Houston, that, that is not nice. You cannot say that. I just call it like I see it. Well, guys, I am so sorry for my friend Commander Houston. He is a friend of ours in Kids Church, and I apologize for his rudeness and his interruption. He appears to be a little bit lost today. I am an intelligent being. I do not get lost. It was a miscalculation by my crew. Uh, a miscalculation by your crew. We'll, we'll go with that. But I'll tell you what, since you're an intelligent being, would you guys be okay with him staying and helping us with our power verse today? All right. You think you could do that? Well, 
I suppose they could manage without me for a few minutes. Okay, I'm glad that they'll make it without you. All right, so let's put our power verse on the screen, and I need you guys to help me tell Commander Houston our power verse on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Hey, Pastor Josh, I used to sing a song about that in Sunday school. Oh, yeah? This little light of mine, I'm, I'm going to let yeah. it shine. This little light of mine, I, I'm going to let it shine. That's good. That's good. I remember that song. That was a good song. Everybody now. This Look. little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it okay, shine. Okay, okay, okay. Commander Houston, that's enough. We've got to get on with the service, all right? Don't let Satan get out. Okay, Commander. I'm going to let it shine. All right, that's enough, Commander. I, I do like that song, and while that's a good walk down memory lane, we've really got to get on with the service today. We've got to memorize today's power verse, okay? I've already got it down. You've already got it down? Yes, I have the memory of a hippopotamus. A hippo? I think you mean an elephant. What? N never mind. You've already got the memory verse down. Yes. All right, well, let's hear it. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Never shine your light in someone's eyes or they will see the stars in the heavens. Matthew 516. 500, Commander Houston, we got a problem. Oh, how original. Like I, I hadn't heard that a thousand times. Right, right. Well, anyway, that is not the power verse. Let's help him out again, can we? Say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Okay, okay. I've seen the error of my ways. I've got it this time. You've got it. Are you sure? Yes. You said that last time. Well, I mean it this time. <laughs> okay. Can we give them another try? Let's try it. Go ahead. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good snacks like Doritos, Nutter Butters, Fruit Roll-Ups, Sour Patch Kids, oh, and pickles! Pick, pickle? What are you talking about, Commander Houston? That is not part of the power verse. I'm sorry. I had it, but then I got distracted thinking about all those good snacks. Have you ever eaten astronaut food? Let's just say it is not the most appetizing <laughs> I have not eaten an astronaut food, and I can imagine it's not good, but again, we, we've got a lot of other stuff. We've got to pray over all these kids. We've got to get to some other stuff, so we've got to get back to the power verse. Let's teach them one last time. Here we go. One, two, three. Let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Okay, I've really got it this time. You've got it. Yes. Are if, you sure? Yes. If these people can do it, surely a space monkey as myself uh, can do it. You have got to be nice, Commander Houston. But anyways, let's hear it. Let's give them one last try. I really hope you don't let me down this time. Come on. Let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. All right. Give it up for Commander Houston. Good job, Commander Houston. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Pastor Josh. I'm glad I could be of assistance, but I really must return to my crew to fix my spacecraft. When will they learn? Never send a human to do a monkey's job. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's a good word of advice there. But anyway, let's tell Commander Houston bye. Everybody say bye, Commander Houston. Bye. Oh, man, he is always up to something and always interrupting us. But today we are talking about letting our light shine. Everybody say, let your, let your light shine. That's right. And that's why we have these glow sticks. If you're wondering, kind of our theme for today is lights. And this morning I want to talk a bit, little bit about lights and show you some different kinds of lights. Talk about a few different kinds of lights, right? We have flashlights. There are lanterns. We have light bulbs in the ceilings, light bulbs in your home, right? We have a headlamp we have a candle and each of these lights do one thing what they shine right each of these lights shine and each of these lights shine but they do kind of have specific purposes 
this flashlight is good for taking a walk or maybe going out at night and checking something in your backyard. It's, it's portable, it's easy to carry, and it's convenient. Anywhere you shine it, the light is going to shine. You've also got a lantern, right? A lantern is good for camping or going hunting or just anywhere where you need kind of a brighter light to cover a bigger space. Lanterns come in handy. And so you got flashlight, you got lanterns. One of my favorites is the headlamp, and this is very convenient. If you've ever worked on your car or had to work on something and you need your hands kind of to be free where you can work on things, a headlamp is really good. And then we have the old-fashioned candles, sponsored by James and Maria Organics here. Uh, but the candle, yeah, give them a round of applause there. They didn't know they were sponsors. They got that for free. Uh, but the candle is good, right? It's a good for a candlelight dinner. It's good if your power goes out at your house. A candle helps light things up. I won't burn down the church here. But all of these lights, they do one thing, they shine. And the purpose of light is to do what? It's to shine, but to take away darkness. And that's what I want us to understand this morning is that light takes away darkness. Anywhere there's light, darkness has to leave. And so each of these are kind of lights, but this morning I want to talk about a different kind of light. And that light is Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. That's right. Jesus is the light. And in John 12, 46, it says, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. Jesus is the light in the world. Jesus came to be the light in a dark world. And I know, especially for kids, that can seem kind of confusing, being in the dark, right? We go outside right now. Is it dark outside? No. Okay, you go outside in three hours. It's not going to be dark outside. And so what does that mean? Jesus and the Bible, they're not speaking of physical darkness. They're talking about spiritual darkness. And spiritual darkness is anything that goes against God's word and anything that doesn't have to do with God, what he says, and against God's love is spiritual darkness. And people who are not walking in relationship with Jesus are in spiritual darkness. And how many of you have ever been scared of the dark? Maybe you've gotten lost in the dark, right? Darkness can be kind of scary. Even as an adult, when you're in pitch black, you're in the middle of nowhere, darkness can be kind of eerie, kind of scary. And as many of you are getting ready to go back to school, back to work, maybe you're already at work, but you're surrounded by spiritual darkness. Your schools, you're in spiritual darkness. Your jobs, there's spiritual darkness around you. And there are going to be people that you encounter that don't know God, that don't love God, that don't follow his word. There's going to be people at your work that lie. There's going to be people that cheat. There's going to be people that gossip. You're going to be surrounded by darkness. But this morning, I want to tell you that we have the answer to that. We have the answer to that darkness. We have hope. You see, as Christians, we carry the light with us wherever we go. We have the light. We have the answer to darkness. We must let our light shine. And this morning, if you'll turn the lights down in the back just for a minute, you know, you may be thinking that I'm just a kid. I'm just one person. And that's true, right? You're just one person, or you may be a kid. But I want you to look around this room and look at all the lights. If you kind of hold your light up, if you have one, all right? Look at all the lights around this room. You're not just one person. You may be one person, but look at all the other Christians. Look at all the other lights around you. And you see, we have a job to shine our lights wherever we go. When you go to work, you've got to shine your light. And you can know that you're not the only Christian because you're not the only Christian in this room. You're not the only Christian in the city. You're not the only Christian in the world. We are surrounded in a world, other, a lot of other Christians out with us. We're not alone. But each of us have a responsibility. If each of us do our job and shine our light wherever we go, we can make a big difference. It takes each of us doing our part, each of us shining our light at our school, at our work, and making an impact. But how do we shine our light? How do we do that? You see, again, we are carriers of the light. We let Jesus shine through us. We take the light wherever we go. And we shine that light by showing God's love. We shine that light by going to work and not talking about gossip, not gossiping with other people. We shine that light by 
not cheating at school when everybody else cheats. We shine that light by showing love to others when other people are bullying them, when other people are picking on them. We shine our light by praying for people when, when people are sick, when people are hurt, when people are sad. We shine our light by sharing our faith. All of those ways, when we do that, we're turning on that light and letting God's light shine through us. And so this morning, as Pastor Drew's getting ready to come up in just a second, I want to encourage you. You know, again, this is a family service, and this is some of the stuff is geared for kids, but this message applies to all of us. Whether you're at work or you're st- you've been in work or you're going back to work, you're going to school, this message applies to all of us. We have a light to let it shine. That verse, we might be in a kid's service or we might kind of have a family service, but that verse wasn't written for kids. That's written for all of us. And so I want to encourage you to let your light shine. Shine. Can, can people at your work, can people at your school tell that there's something different about you? Because they should be able to. They should be able to say, and look, you know what? That person walks in peace. That person walks in love. That person walks in faith. There's something different about them. And that's what that is, is your light shining through. We're shining the light for Jesus. And so I want to encourage you this morning. How many of you, as you're getting ready to go back to school, will, will try, as you're getting ready to go back to work, to make an effort to let your light shine? Amen. I know you guys can do it. And when we work together, when we do it, we can make a big impact for God. So let's let Pastor Drew come up here as he's going to be praying for our kids this morning. Thank you, God. Still struggling. Amen. Man, listen, that was awesome. Y'all give it up for Pastor Josh and his team today. Amen. I feel like sometimes we need a little bit more of that. Amen. That was that was awesome. What a what a great encouragement. What a great reminder. And so I have the uh, the privilege and the opportunity to just talk about the anointing for a few minutes. And uh, I'm going to tell you, Pastor has done an excellent job over the last as long as I can remember, 23 years for me, but always. Uh, taking a few minutes to talk about why this is such a big deal. Because sometimes we don't always realize that what we're doing is a big thing. And what we're doing is not just a big thing for us, but it's a big thing, it's a big deal to God. And I want to just encourage you, as Pastor has always encouraged us, that things that are a big things that are of a big deal to God should be a big deal to us. And so I just want to encourage with you with you that this morning. I'm not going to keep you long because I don't want to keep you here all day. Uh, but once I had an opportunity to start studying on the anointing. Realize we could be here for a while. And so I'm just going to give you a couple things, talk to you for a few things, things that have already been talked about before. Just want to reiterate and encourage you this morning. So what is the anointing? This is what it is. It's the act of consecration, dedication, and or holiness. It means set apart. It means dedicated. One of the things that we're going to be doing this morning is uh, as we're um, anointing your students, your kids, your co-workers, you guys that are going back, your teachers, going back into the work environment of, of, the, of the, the school environment, you, you parents, we're anointing you. We're, we're declaring the Holy Spirit over your life, God's work in your life. We're declaring that, no, just as Pastor Josh said, no matter what happens this year, that you're going to let your light shine. We're declaring that. We're believing that over your life. We're setting this you apart because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And so I want to challenge you. It's not so much the oil. The oil is not the, the main uh, thing of importance here. It's a, it's a symbolic of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what we're doing. That's why this is so important. We're dedicating you to God this morning. Number two, what kind of anointings were there? And you see different kinds in the Bible, but you see the anointing with oil. You see the anointing of uh, sometimes they would take different spices and put them together and ground them up and, and take a, make an anointing oil out of it. But then you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Number three, who was anointed? I mean, as we get into this, like everything is anointed. You, everything, I mean, everything is awesome. So cool. So who was anointed? The priests were anointed. The prophets The kings, you'll see people like King David, they anointed him with oil. They would would even anoint sometimes the dead. They would anoint the living. Do we have anybody alive in here today? Hey, there we go. Some of y'all will get there, right? 
They, they anointed the living. They anointed them. They anointed the sick. That's one of the things that we believe in, is if you're sick in your body, you bring them before the elders of the church. We anoint your head with oil. We believe God's healing power over your life. That's a, a great place to say amen. That's what we believe. We believe that for your life. That's why we anoint you with oil, believing that God is your healer and your provider, that he will intervene on your behalf. They also um, anointed the ministers, the apostles. They, they would anoint these people in position. Has anybody ever had a guest come to their home? Like somebody to come have dinner with, maybe a best friend, maybe at game night, maybe have some family in town. Most of us have had somebody come to our home. They would also anoint their guests. Something that we were like, oh, I didn't know they did that. They would even anoint the guests that came into their home, giving up their friendship to the Lord. I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Number four, what was anointed? The altars were anointed. The furniture, the tabernacles, the, the, the pillars. And that, something that pastor said, I think last year, year before, really touched, touched my heart, got me to think, got, got me to think in a little bit. But he said, even the shields that the warriors would take into battle were anointed with oil, representing the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. That's pretty cool because the Bible says that he is our shield. And I started, I started like looking, I'm like, man, that's so powerful. And so even the warriors, as you go into battle, as you starting to do these things, as Pastor Josh said, you're, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities of darkness, wickedness in high places. Listen, we anoint you so you can do the things that God has called you to do. I love that. They would anoint their homes, the entrances, the exits. They would even anoint their animals. Like, man, this is crazy. Like, you're out there just sprinkling oil and everything. I'm like, this guy, they, were, they were, like, intense. But I remember when we moved into our home, uh, when we bought our home and we moved in, we, we got all of our friends, all of our youth leaders, all the students that wanted to come, our family, and we, we dedicated our home to the Lord. And so we anointed our home with oil, and we prayed over our home as a group. We said, man, we're going to dedicate our house to the Lord, that our home would be a place that's always inviting. Uh, our, our home will always be a place where people are welcome here, no matter what. And that's so one of the things that we did is we dedicated our home. We anointed it with oil, the same thing that we're doing this morning for you. Amen? Amen. It's good stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so going into this, so there was a time in the Bible, I'm going to go with, to Matthew really quick, Matthew 19. You yeah, already got it marked. Don't freak out. So Matthew 19, 13. There was a time in the Bible where the parents were bringing their kids to Jesus. And pastors shared this many times before. But there was this time where the, uh, the, the parents were bringing their kids to the Lord. And y'all remember what the disciples did? They stopped them. He, 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 the, the disciples kind of like got in the way and said, they were like, hey, not the kids, man. We're not, not right now, not this time kind of rebuked them, and then Jesus turned around and rebuked the disciples. And so I want to read that to you because this is a big deal. This is why we, one of the reasons why we do what we do. He said, then the little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray for them, for the disciples rebuked them. I know this, if someone, like, rebuked your kid, you would probably whoop them. Anyways, like, hey, man, get your kid out of here. I don't know. I was like, man, Jesus is, is awesome. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And the Lord, there's a reminder here that the Lord is asking you as a parent to always be bringing your kids to the Lord. Okay, it's not just the house of God. It's not just a place where we come and we gather. And Pastor Josh and Shelby do an incredible job of teaching your kids uh, the truth of God's word and helping them live out their life for the Lord. Come on. They do an amazing job. But he didn't say, here, bring them to church. He said, the parents brought them to Jesus. And that's one of the things here, guys, as, as you as a parent, a spiritual authority in a kid's life, bring your kids to Jesus. Right. Do your best to bring them before the Lord. And that, I'm, I'm telling you, you're one of the greatest influences in a child's life is their parents. Yeah. And so there is this, this uh, picture of a parent bringing their child before the Lord and Jesus is saying, don't stop them from doing that. This is, this is the kingdom of heaven. This is important to me. Bring your kids to me. So like I said, if this is a big deal to God, it should be a big deal to us. And I'll just say, uh, 
I'm not going, like I said, I'm not going to keep you long today. just want to give you some of the reasons why this is such a big deal. If you're interested, I, I challenge you to look it up and study the word because it's so good. So, but at this time, if you have any children that are in the nursery, if you would go and get them at this time, we're going we're gonna to anoint our kids this morning. And so as they're getting their, their kids, I want to talk about one more thing. What are we going to be praying this morning? And one of the things that we're going to be praying is that your kids will have godly examples this year. And I want to just challenge you in that because how many of you know we could use some more godly examples? Amen. I think we all agree that we could use some more godly examples. But I found sometimes in my life that there is, there's not always going to be a godly example. And as Pastor Josh did such an incredible job, I hope it reminds you that sometimes you have to be the godly example. When there are no leaders, you have to be the leader. Something we teach in Men of Honor, when there is no man, I'll be the man. When there is no godly leader, I'll be the godly leader. When there's no one else letting their light shine, you let your light shine. And that's just, I believe as we pray for godly examples, that you have godly friendships, that God will give you godly teachers, and, and, and so forth and so on, but God will also make you to be a godly student. God will help you be the godly young man and young woman, young child that God has called you to be, and you can do that at an early age. So that's what we're praying, one of the things we're praying for this morning. I wrote, let your light shine, so I got mine, it's pretty cool. I don't know why I got the pink one, but hey, I'm rocking it today. So another thing is, parents, we're going to be praying for you, that God will give you wisdom. Listen, I was a knucklehead. I was a tough kid. And my parents did everything they could to raise me right. And they did, an, they did a fantastic job of raising me, despite how challenging and difficult I could have been. So we're, I'm just telling you, we're going to be praying for you, parents. I know you have your work cut out for you. You've got some tough kids, but listen, they're worth, your kids are amazing. God's got a future for your kids. God's got a plan for your kids. Don't give up on your kids. So we're going to be praying that God will give you wisdom. Pastor says this a lot, not man's wisdom, but God's wisdom, godly wisdom, wisdom that sees past the flesh and straight into what God has for your kids. Because no one else can see that sometimes but you. Love your kids. So we're going to ask God to give you wisdom and direction, peace that will surpass all understanding. Woo! How many is a peace? Amen. I might be the only one. We need some peace. And then <clears throat> the last thing we're going to, talk, I wanna, we're going to pray for today, um, if you have your Bible, just go to Job real quick. Like I said, pastor has been one of the greatest influences and teachers in my life. And so I, I grab a lot of what I speak and, and share is from what pastor has talked about it because it's left an impression on my heart. And I hope, I hope it's done the same because we're talking about godly examples. He's a great godly example. And so one of the things that pastor shares is praying a hedge of protection over our kids, a hedge of protection over our teachers, a hedge of protections over our families, over our students. Listen, we need that more than ever today. And so Job 1, 9 through 10 says this. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God more for nothing? Have you, have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. We're praying for a hedge of protection, not just over your life, but over everything you do and everywhere you go over your school, over your drive to school, over that long wait as you pick your kid up from school, right? Over every area of your life. The devil has no authority whatsoever in your life. And I, I'm not, I'm reading this out of the Word, so this isn't like Drewology. This is just from what the Word says. And so we just want to encourage you, because you can, you can do the same thing for your own family today. Speak into their life. Encourage them. And that's what we're believing, that God, this is the time that God is redeeming the family. Bringing children back to their parents and parents back to their kids. And we're going to pray over that this morning. I'm grateful that God redeemed my family and my life. And I've seen that in my own life. And if God could do that for me, he could do that for you as well. Amen. So at this time, if I can get the pastors, uh, prayer teams, y'all come up. I'm going to ask the youth leaders, if y'all could come up as well. Uh, we, we, have, we have some students, believe it or not, they come to church very faithfully uh, without their parents. And so we've kind of taken that role to be the, the godly and spiritual parents in their life. So we're going to pray over them as well. And we have our leaders here to help with that. So if you're, uh, we're going to pray for college, 
all the way down to kids. So if you're going back to school at this time, if you would come to the front, we're going to anoint you with oil. Oh, yeah, babies too. Thank you, Pastor Josh. And if some of y'all need a little extra oil poured on your head, we could do that for you. I'm just kidding. But if, you're, if your kid's going back to school, if you're uh, in elementary, middle school, high school, college, y'all come at this point. We're gonna, at this time, we're going to pray for you. Yeah, parents, if y'all, y'all would like to come with your kid, that'd be great. Family, gather around your, your kids. Might get a little crowded, but listen, they need to look back and see you with them this morning. And if you're like a spiritual father or mother in the room and you want to come stand with somebody, come on. There's nothing wrong with that. They need you. Amen. y'all a minute. Anybody still need some oil? Some of you parents are like double anointed. Pour the, pour the oil on his head. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just kidding. Amen. Okay, hey guys, we're going we're gonna to pray this morning. Amen. So y'all just decree in prayer as we pray for your kids, your families, your parents. Listen, we love you guys, and we're just going to declare God's goodness over your life this year. That this is going to be the best year you ever had. Amen, we believe that. We believe every year is going to be the best year you ever had with Jesus. Amen. So, Father God, we love you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We thank you, God, for who you are today. Lord, you are our, our Savior. You are our healer and our provider. You're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We glorify you, God. We're grateful, Lord, for who you are in their life today. God, we just pray today, Lord, that you are the Lord of their life, that you go before them, God. You are already in their schools. You are already in their homes, God. You are already on the drive to their schools this this year, God. You're in their athletics department. God, you're in their band. You're in everything and everything they're going to do, God. You're in their classroom. You're in their cafeteria. God, we're grateful for the presence of God that is everywhere that these kids are going to be this year. You're on their college campuses. You're in their middle schools, their elementary schools, their high schools, God, and we give you the glory, Lord, that you are working on their behalf. So, God, we just declare this year is going to be the best year that they ever had in Jesus' name. God, we pray that you bring friends along in their life, godly friends, good inspiration, ones that are going to encourage them, ones that's going to edify them, ones that are going to build them up, friends that will last forever, friends that will sit closer than a brother. God, we ask for good influences in Jesus' name. God, we pray that, that you allow them to have the best teachers on the planet. God, to allow them to love them and respect them, God. Do a work in these students' hearts this year. Lord, to let them know that you're working on their behalf. God, I know some of them are nervous, God. Take the nerves away in Jesus' name. God, that you've given them a peace that will surpass all understanding. God, help them this year, though. You are just one cry away, Lord, that the moment they can call upon the name of the Lord, you are there. So, God, let them know there's nothing to be afraid of. You are with them in all areas of their life. We rebuke the plans of the enemy over their life in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. All that rise against them will fall in Jesus' name. Lord, we rebuke the plans of the enemy over their schools, over their families, over their lives. We just cancel out the plans of darkness in Jesus' name. We pray these kids are going to thrive in Jesus' name. These kids are world changers. God, we thank you. We're so thankful for a, a group of parents that are raising up a generation of world changers. God, that are future that are going to change the future, that are going to be put in positions of power, and they're going to change it for the glory of the Lord. God, we pray that you, you unite the home like it's never been united before. God, we pray you strengthen the families, God. Restore the relationships between kids and their parents, between parents and their kids. God, remind these students that the voice of their parents is not the voice of the enemy. Lord, that they love them, that they're there for them to encourage them, to help them, to build them, to strengthen them, God. God, we pray you give our parents strength this year. Lord, strength to endure. Strength, God, to do the right thing, to help them, to love on their kids. God, even when their kids say things that they don't 
want to hear. You know, help them to love them anyways, God. Give them the peace that will surpass all understanding. Give them patience. God, help our, our parents to be the godliest parents on the planet. Lord, to do, I don't know what anyone else is doing, but this church, these parents, these students are going to serve the Lord all the days of their life. And we give you the glory for it, God, that these students are going to change the world. We pray that college campuses, high schools, middle schools, elementary schools are changed in Jesus' name. God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and Lord, we just pray a hedge of protection over each and every one of them. God, that you anoint them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, that nothing will come against them. In Jesus' name, I pray everything their hands touch will prosper. Everywhere their feet go will prosper. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory and we give you the honor tonight, today. In Jesus' name, we said amen. Amen. Y'all give the Lord a round of applause. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hey Amen. If you're employed by the school district, if you're a teacher, daycare teacher, anything involved with the school district or teaching come on forward come on down now we can anoint you with oil as well so i've been teaching for 24 years and so i was asked to speak on behalf of educators and people who work in the education system education's changed a lot over 24 years, but one thing remains the same, and it is the heart of an educator. Educators are so much more than just teaching the lessons. They are a lot, there are not a lot of professions where you are asked to do your job and do it well, and then on top of that, you're also expected to be a mother and father figure to your students. And by that father figure and mother figure, I'm referring to the protector side. We are there to protect our students physically, mentally, emotionally, and we're there to guide them and direct them and most of all, just love them. The key to being a good teacher is building relationships with your students and I feel like today, more than ever, that is one of the most important aspects of being a teacher and it's also one of the hardest. We are not only teaching the curriculum, but we are teaching them to be successful adults. Teachers are some of the most selfless, giving, caring individuals in our world their goals and ambitions are seeing that their students succeed in life, and many of us have our teachers to thank for where we are today. Yet teachers often face discouragement and feelings of defeat, so I encourage you to speak words of encouragement and thankfulness to the teachers that you know, and it will definitely make a difference in their day and in their life. With everything going on today, teachers will be going back and thinking about the simple things like how to decorate your room and make it fun and inviting for your students and all the supplies and the lesson plans. But they're also going to be thinking about some big stuff like school safety and sickness. We don't fully know what the 22-23 school year will look like with so many uncertainties, but we do know that God will help us navigate each change and challenge so when you pray, ask for peace and comfort for teachers. Also pray for the teachers, the school board members, the superintendents, paraprofessionals, secretaries, principals, school nurses, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, custodians and counselors, and anyone else I might have forgotten, that they prepare for their days ahead of this new school year and how they will impact students' lives. Pray that their interactions with students be loving and to help them open their hearts to the students, that they will be a positive light in that student's day. Pray to give them the patience. We need a lot of patience. So pray for patience and the right words to say when there are students in needs and let them, I mean, lift them up daily and encourage them. As educators, you are chosen to be where you are. God designed each of us in each of our positions for a specific purpose. So my teacher friends, remember why you became a teacher. Ignite your passion every day. And I'm gonna let my husband pray over us. I don't wanna pray over myself. 
She's a great prayer warrior. I'll help, help you down. There's somebody, Kirk, will you uh, come in and anoint her with oil? Has everybody been anointed? Have y'all been anointed with oil? No. Martin, will y'all? Hey, if you're if you work, Mr. Miller, for a school, please come down here. <laughs> Everybody that works for a school, you're so important. You're so important. Uh, you know, with all the bad that goes on in the world, they're on the front lines. If somebody was to bust in that school, I guarantee you there's not a teacher that would run away from their kids that are in the classroom. Yeah. They build a bond with these kids, and it's, it's powerful. And so I, I just want to pray, and I'm going to pray for anything and everything. Uh, for these employees of the schools. Amen? Stand with me, and I want you to stretch forth your hand. Don't just uh, be a spectator. Be a participator. Contribute. Don't be a consumer. I spoke about that. Don't be a consumer. Be a contributor. Let's stretch forth our hands and pray for these people. Father God, I just lift every one of these employees up to you, Father. God, I thank you for them taking a selfless role and being employed by a school, school district, bus drivers. God, everything that they do means so much to these kids, whether they realize it or not. God, I pray for a hedge of protection, not just around the building, but God, I pray for a hedge of protection around the block that that school sits on. God, that, the, that as the enemy tries to come in, they ain't even going to be able to get anywhere close to a school. Because we're standing in the hedge and making up the gap, Father, for our everything. God, I pray that your angels just protect anything and everything that these employees have. Father, whether it's a, a, a bus, whether it's a, a two-by-four, whether it's anything that they have, God, that they know that the hand of God is upon them and the, the, that the protection that you have for us, God, is around them. Father, I just pray that you give them a supernatural wisdom every day, Father, on how to handle situations. They may think they've gone through everything, but God, something's going to come up that they're not going to know how to deal with. And God, I pray you just have the right words, have the right spirit in them, Father, to show them the way that they should go and to give them the words to say. For some of these teachers, Father, they're like mothers. They're like fathers to these kids. Let them be the light, as Pastor Josh talked about, not just for the kids, but the employees be a light in the darkness, Father. Because we're in a dark, dark world, Father. And just one little light shines where everybody can see it, God. Lift these employees up to you, God. Let them run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. Give them wisdom. Give them a supernatural, divine understanding of how to do their job. Give them the peace that passes all understanding when they go to work. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Pastor Harry. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. You be seated just for a moment, and we're going to close our service out. Uh, pray to him lead us in. I, I told us in the first service, and uh, I just want to share this again. We cannot take this lightly. I know some of you don't have kids or grandkids <laughs> or a mom or dad, a sister, brother, son or daughter that's teaching or in education. But especially as it relates to the children, church, we can't take this lightly. Pastor Andrew touched on it when they brought the, the moms and dads brought their children to Jesus. The disciples said, pushed him away. Said he doesn't have time for them right now. What did Jesus do? He rebuked those disciples. He said, you bring those children here, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We've done this over 20 years. We're going to continue to do it. So I just want to encourage you, as you have done today, don't take it lightly. Amen. Don't take it lightly. Appreciate your support hanging in here with us. We're going to receive our uh, building fund offering at this time. Now, don't hold me 100% to this, but I think, I think we got approval this week from the city of Farmer to add our parking. 
It has been a journey. We have sent, resent, sent, re but we think we're there. So uh, we'll let you know for sure uh, next Sunday morning, uh, next few days. Amen. So thank you so much. Our balance is, uh, well, I think I'll be shooting up there any second. Look at there. We started over in a $50,000 ballpark. Uh, we're down to $15,000. We'll have all of it paid for as we go in. Amen. So give the Lord a hand of praise for that. We've done that with people just like you. So thank you so very, very much for helping us out. Again, we're going to receive our offer. The four ways you can give already been explained to you. Got the buckets up here for those of you in-house. Everybody give something and give it cheerfully. Give it, give it willingly. Give it lovingly. Amen. Is that all right? And uh, the Lord is going to bless you for it. Father, we thank you today. So good to us. Thank you for the word that was shared today the, the, uh, from our student pastor, from the pastor of our children, uh, Pastor Jeremy, the beautiful prayer he prayed, Heather prayed, uh, Pastor Andrew prayed. Just It's just been a great day all the way around. To God be the glory for anything and everything that we have said and done today, the songs that have been played and sung, it's to God be the glory for all of it, Lord. Now as we come to our billing fund, thank you, Father, for using these people for almost 56 years. You've been so faithful to us, not only numerically and spiritually and physically, but also financially. To God be the glory. And we're excited about what we're going to be able to do in the future in the way of billing, adding on to what we have here. We thank you for it in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone in unity said together, amen. And amen. If you've got your building fund, the buckets are out right there. You can bring it at this time and drop it in. Otherwise, let's stand together. You know what? Stretch forth your hand this way. Would you do that? I'm going to pray a spoken priestly prayer of blessing. You'll just stand together. If you want to receive this prayer of blessing in your life, may the Lord bless you, keep you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace a peace the world cannot give and therefore the world cannot take away. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said together, amen, amen. Bless you as you go in the love of the Lord. Amen. Sing for us, praise team.